My oh my, how things have changed since just last month. My lantana is finally blooming and in its glory. And it's only getting started. But I just love the intricate little flowers on each stem, ranging from red, orange, and then yellow in the centers. And then in the fall, the lantana makes these little berries which the birds just love. I have been getting delicious strawberries in my little Dollar Tree stackable container. Oh yep, there's still some left. My wave petunias are really enjoying this heat as well. It seems like since it started to get over 80 degrees, they've just grown so big and look at my dahlia is blooming. How pretty is that? Although the Elizabeth bougainvillea is kind of done with its initial show, my dahlias are taking over center stage. Isn't that the way life is though? If all of our flowers could bloom at the exact same time, that would be pure heaven. I was very busy in the garden and I have a lot of changes that I'd like to show you. Right here I have a geranium and that is blooming so well. A little petunia next to it. I love how the pink and purple colors contrast each other. A few more larkspur. Those are definitely hanging on, but they are going to seed. So I come out every day and cut off all the seed pods, hoping that I'll prolong the lifespan of my larkspur. I would say this is the most beautiful annual I've grown so far this year. First time I've ever grown it as well. Well, first time that it got this big anyway, and I couldn't be more pleased. So I just don't want to see it go. I want it to last forever. So call me crazy, but every day I'm out here cutting off all the seed pods. But here's some changes. Look, my thug pineapple sage is gone. That thing got so big. And if you'll notice, I started with one pineapple sage right over there, but underneath the ground, it made more roots everywhere in my garden. And it was just suffocating all my other plants, like my Shasta daisy. I had to cut that back too, because the pineapple sage got so big, it took over everything. Now you can see my geranium. That's not getting thugged out or bossed around. I mean, I love the pineapple sage, but it just, it just took over. See, here it is, it's growing back. So I just wanna leave it right there. So I'll definitely have to remove all the other underground plants that came up. But now I can stand here and watch the birds and see the fountain. And if you'll notice, I do have volunteer sunflowers. They're starting to go to seed. I was tempted to take them down, but then I saw all the yellow finches yesterday. So I'm gonna leave those up, even though they are kind of hanging down and, but the birds are loving them. So we are going to leave those alone. So I need to figure out something to do with that veggie box over there. The roses aren't getting too big and the geraniums are doing well, but it needs something. I'm thinking something that gets dappled shade. Not quite sure yet, but that's the fun thing about garden. There's always something new to do. Okay, let me address my Vegiga raised bed. I had violas in there and stock and irises, but violas do not like temperatures over 70 degrees. And here in California, zone 9B, my temperatures have been over 90. So they're not doing too good. Those will be on their way out any time now. But I do have zinnias planted back there. So I'm hoping that they're all gonna sprout and take over this area, which will be beautiful. A raised box with all colorful zinnias. So that's my plan. But this is in the... <laughs> this the, <laughs> all the dogs are howling now this is in the transitional stage i guess you could call it we all have transitional stages in our gardens right i mean when is our garden ever ever complete 
But look at my beautiful white Natchez crepe myrtle tree is blooming. I planted this only a few months ago and it's so beautiful. I just love the white flowers. And below this, I have Bells of Ireland. My girlfriend gave me little plugs, which were only about one inch tall. And they really love this spot. They're doing so well. First time I've ever grown Bells of Ireland. <laughs> Look at my sunflowers. The weight just pulls them down. But like I said, I don't have the heart to take them down because the goldfinches are feeding off of them. And look at how tall those sunflowers are. Yeah. Hi, Abby. She's like, hey, where did all that pineapple sage go? Now I can jump up on here and actually fit. Yeah, that pineapple sage was a beast. I guess when a plant takes over, it's called a thug. I just learned that by watching other YouTube videos. They're called thugs when they take over. So I think that's kind of funny. I'm always learning something new every day. And right over there is my pugster butterfly bush. Look at how tall that got. And my sedum autumn joy. That has definitely gotten big. And it's going to be so pretty in the fall when it blooms. I can't wait to show you that. Some people call cutting back spring cleanup. I call this a pre-summer cleanup. But look it! I have Supertunia Vista bubblegums. I'm so excited. I used to have the nasturtium here, remember? And it just flowed all the way out onto the ground. It did not like this warmer weather. So now I'm replacing those with the Supertunia Vista bubblegum, one of my favorite plants. I'm hoping those get nice and big and just trail over that veggie box. I call it a veggie box even though I don't put vegetables in there. I just got used to saying that. My succulent barrel. I just propagated succulents from there. I took them from the, from the mother plants there and now I have a whole nother garden below. Starting with my guacamole hosta, some carex grass. I forget what these purple things are called. They're like clovers and they make these pretty little pink flowers. They sure are pretty. Some impatience in the back, miniature roses in the front, another guacamole hosta underneath the bottle tree. Hello, Abby. I have a couple little pots in this corner behind my bench. Another one of those purple clover things some creeping jenny and a little orchid in the center some sage look at my beautiful hydrangea it's just starting to bloom more guacamole hostas and i just bought these hostas from proven winners i just love them they add so much color to the shade garden i just recently made a video about those and I was talking about going back to the store and getting more and I did I did get more I couldn't resist so I bought one more and I divided it and made two I know my azaleas look like they need some iron but we'll see what happens with those another sedum autumn joy I just took a piece from that mother plant I showed you not long ago stuck it in the dirt and I have another one so this is my shade garden. I really don't show my shade garden too much because it was never really full in the past, so I was a little insecure. So I'm just starting to show it now. And inside my iron, center iron plant stand, I just planted some wave petunias. I know the Supertunia Vista bubblegum are absolutely the best, but I don't know, these wave petunias I really love these as well. I've planted them here before and they did fantastic. So I figured since they work for me, I'll plant the wave petunias in here again. They just really love this spot. She is digging there. No, 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 no. Okay, out. 
Okay, well, since I'm over here getting a little perturbed with Abby, let me show you my cottage garden. As you can see, I did put a screen up for the chickens because the weather is really, really starting to warm up. I have some wave petunias on both sides of my cottage garden. My chrysanthemums are blooming again. I cannot believe it. Vinca in those stacked pots. And I also have some zinnias that are starting to come up over here. I found that bench at a garage sale, so I just painted it blue and put my little artistic design on it. And I just call this my cottage garden. The bench is actually really tiny, almost too small for me to sit in. So it's kind of like a little miniature garden, just a little way to make the most of this corner. And because it's that time of year again, I'm growing vinca. Vincas do so well in California Zone 9B. It's one of the easiest and most colorful and prolific plant I grow in my garden. I couldn't imagine my garden without vinca. So I'm so happy it's time for vinca again. And that blue bush behind the vinca is called plumbago. And I'm growing that in two stackable tires. I also have some creeping Jenny inside that little vintage tea kettle and a marigold. And you notice I'm really avoiding that bathtub. It's a hot mess right now. And over on this side, I have more Vinca. <laughs> oh yeah, now Abby's being a good girl. Inside here I have bee balm and it's blooming. Isn't it just so pretty? There's my vinca right behind the bee balm. And can you believe it? But my chrysanthemum is blooming again. It's almost done, but wow, look at that. This is the second time it's bloomed this spring. Are we spring or are we summer now? I'm not really sure. There's more vinca down there. I picked up this cute little stand at the thrift store for $5. Okay, now I'm going to take you over here and show you my Vegiga raised vegetable bed. Look at that huge zucchini plant I have in there. It looks like my spinach has gone to seed. So what I'll do is I'll take all the leaves off of that. I'll harvest all the leaves and then pull the plant because it's going to seed. It's going to start tasting bitter if I don't pick it now. And my first zinnia is blooming. Let's see if I have any zucchini. Oh yeah, it looks like there's one growing. Pretty soon I'll be harvesting those and having delicious zucchini. And speaking of vegetables, this is my narrow space vegetable garden that's only three feet four inches wide. I'm growing so many things down this narrow space, starting with eggplant, peppers, and cilantro. I just love cilantro. Tomatoes, tomatillos. Look at how cute these are. I swear tomatillos are the sweetest little things to grow. They're so pretty. And of course, this sun gold tomato is my absolute favorite. I've never tasted a tomato sweeter than the sun gold. More sun gold tomatoes over here. Look at all those tomatoes. The bees are definitely doing their job down this down this narrow space. I planted some cucumber, but that has yet to pop up. Another little tomato and a pepper. Oh, look at these. I believe this is the lunchbox orange pepper. More tomatoes. And this is also where I do my composting in buckets. And I even have some okra. This narrow space was such a great way to utilize this area because it does get full sun. I know it's shaded now, that's because it's in the late afternoon, but my vegetables seem to do the best in this spot. So what a great way to utilize this space. Three feet, four inches wide. And there's Abby harassing Lucky. 
I love it when cats and dogs are friends, don't you? It just brings so much harmony to one's life and in the garden. They love each other. So cute. Okay, guys, you need to get out of my way now. Excuse me. Excuse me, lovebirds. I'm trying to get by. And real quick, I want to show you inside my patio. Now that the weather is warming up, I can finally grow coleus. I just love the beautiful, vibrant colors. They do so well underneath my patio. And right there is also a Japanese maple. Unfortunately, my maiden hair fern kind of croaked. Maybe I didn't water it enough. So all I do is I just cut it back and I keep this watered and it'll grow back in no time. This isn't the first time it's done it. So I have faith that my maiden hair fern will bounce back. These are more coleus I grew from seed. I'll put those out somewhere in my shade garden when they're a little bit bigger. Just my little happy place where I can be different or a hippie, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> One thing's for sure, Jesus saves. <laughs>